thought the Order would get rid of any trace of the old Source King. Bracchus Rex. King, sorcerer, and scholar, though not quite a gentleman. The child has a small mirror in his hands. He holds it up at angles, inspecting his eyes, his chin, the crown of his head. He spots you, and his arms snap to his sides. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Why? But, are you a sorcerer? One of those guys that brings the bad void things here? The child looks at you straight on, unafraid, searching your face. He lifts his mirror to his nose, closes one eye, and looks at himself again. I don't see any source on you or me. I guess they're wrong or crazy. <laughs> Maybe you're right. At least they don't mind where anyone goes. They know we can't leave the island, and it's a lot nicer out here than inside. They're gone now. The Magisters took them already. I guess now they're cured, and maybe they're waiting for me back at home. But you didn't die. I guess I am, but it's just normal to be scared. Nowhere isn't scary. There isn't anywhere safer. That's what I mean. You'll see. Woken. Those are the same beasts that sank our ship. Damn, they made it to shore. stare at the slain beasts and comment that they must have been the cause of the shipwreck. I just want to get out of here before any more of these things show up. They didn't put up much of a fight. Dry land mustn't suit them. Drowned and eaten by a void woken. I wonder in which order. of wisdom in my homeland. How fortuitous. The cat's eyes are clouded and grey, but it stares at you with acute intensity, 
Its eyes clear, and it shakes its head, confused. I found something. One must put in due effort if one is to reap the proper reward. I wonder where this leads. As the alcove opens up, you see the same skeleton that you met on the boat before it sank. He's still not wearing his mask. He's leaning over a corpse, prodding and pulling at the skin of its face. Bugger. How on earth am I supposed to... Oh. Perhaps... Skeletal fingers reach down and grip the skin of the dead man's face, pulling sharply upwards. After a few more tugs at the man's cheeks, the skeleton relents, letting the head drop to the ground with a damp thud. Damnation! That stuck fast. I wonder, does the beard act as some form of anchor? Ah! No! Stay back! Don't... Oh, it's you. I must admit I'm surprised. Perhaps you're more buoyant than I suspected. It seems the human that stole my mask was rather more resourceful than I gave her credit for. I chased her here, but she rather seems to have given me the slip. Thus... He turns back to the body, prodding at its face cautiously. Why, its face, of course. What other use would I have for some rotting corpse? A face that seems rather stubbornly attached to his skull. I would normally employ a tool to delicately but viciously rip the face from the body. I could then craft a mask to hide my bone. But as I lack such a tool... The skeleton grabs the corpse by the cheeks and pulls hard, grunting in frustration as the body's skin holds firm. Because my own was stolen from me. And the idea of being chased across Rivalon by every idiot with a torch does not appeal. Oh, get away! Monster! Hide the children! Oh. You are simple beasts. And you simply do not like my... Well, not my kind, but those that look like me. So... If I am to traverse this land, 
I will need a mask to disguise my features. Simply put, I am an Eternal, and you are not. You have my sympathies. Indeed, no one seems to have the good taste to be. My people are rather absent, at least from this realm. As for the others, well, there is an excavation site at the Black Pit's oil fields. Perhaps there I'll find my answers. A cult? Hardly. We were a race that existed before the idea of race was needed. We were all one. I could ask you to imagine an Eternal as a creature of incredible intelligence and skill. But I fear the limits of your imagination would not do us justice. We studied the mysteries of the universe. We created works of great art. We... We disappeared. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. We will have our world again. Ah, well, that is the curious thing. They are clearly absent from this world, and yet they are everywhere. Every one of your races resembles them in some manner, and the statues you have built to your gods look remarkably familiar. Perhaps my people have ascended to some new realm. Or perhaps your gods are merely a folk memory. Regardless, they are not here. But I will find them. Wherever they are, I will find them. Well, that hardly seems relevant. But if you must know, I was inconvenienced for a time. Several centuries, in fact. Or perhaps millennia. One tends to lose track. I was sealed in a tomb for daring to be curious about the world. It seems our king did not agree that the universe should be explored to its full potential. Perhaps I should thank him. It seems I was spared whatever happened to the others. I wonder if flowers would be appropriate. I suppose, circumstances being what they are, it could be advantageous. You seem more at ease in this world than I. A guide would certainly be useful. Excellent. While we are conversing, perhaps you notice that I am rather skilled in... Well, all things. Of course, the arcane arts are my little speciality. But being a brilliant wizard does not mean I cannot handle blade or bow. So, which do you require for this enterprise of yours? I could do that with one hand behind my spine. Now! Shall we get on? There is rather a lot to see. Splendid. Very well. Let's be off.
You hear a small whimpering sound from behind a basket. You peer behind it and find a small human child holding her knees and trembling. The child quiets and seems comforted by your presence. She looks up at you with curious eyes. A wide grin cracks across the child's face through her tears, showing two big gaps where her front teeth should be. She laughs. Really? Yeah. Warrior Princess Coral. You're nice. You can have this. I found it outside, but I can't read it yet. That's next year, and then I'll learn it. The child wipes her eyes and, grinning, plunks herself down on the earth and ground. She starts tracing shapes, hearts, stars, and diamonds into the dirt. Psst! Go! Get out! You're not welcome here! Go, she-pig! She eyes you suspiciously. Please. Please, just go. Where is she? You go with us? Who are you? Are you from the shelter? She says nothing of another. Fear alas! She is so late! A magister offers to help us flee. Atusa. She says there are many magisters who do not agree with the bishop. She says they bring us to safety. But Atusa is overdue. She promises to come at noon. We are afraid to stay. Afraid to leave. She says there is a shelter in the marshes outside the fort. She says she brings us there first. She knows a safe path. We wait for a boat, and then we go. Wherever. We make a new home. Atusa is different. She does not believe in this place. In their bishop. She will come. And she will take us away from here. You do nothing wrong. I'm not myself. This place. Fay, please. You hear me, human. Leave. to these turtles. They're... they're transforming.
Swallowed too much seawater by the looks of him. Foolish to attempt an escape by sea in these waters. Lady, it's a lot nicer here than that stinking boat, huh? I'm sure glad you went back to save the others. Saw one of them wringing out their tunic at the shore a few hours ago. Verdus. We already know the truth, Magister. Now speak. I'm a proud loyal to the Order. I would not dream of subverting our cause. Tusa, please. Your Godwoken has asked you a question. Answer him. Need on, I repeat man. myself? I can't wait all day. Watching. That's your fifth blue jet, does it, bro? Whoa. Um, uh, mummy's right here. Where are you? Ah, grab it in your goblet. Come over here. If you don't like the game, Topsy, you can fold. No, no. Just because the pair of you are filthy, cheating lions don't mean Anna? I can't beat you. Where are you, darling? Please. Come on, old man. Please. You must help me. No one here will help me. Not one of these bastards. A child is missing. 
my baby. Oh, bless you, bless you. She's been missing for days now, and not a single soul will help me look for her. Irma's her name. She's about as high as your hip. Black of hair, a quiet child. Not prone to wandering off. I'm sick with worry, completely sick. And no one in this damn camp will lift a finger to help me find her. I last saw her just here, near three days ago. She was playing with her little doll, and I was washing out her tunic. I turned from her for one moment, and she was gone. Left her doll behind, too. It's so unlike her. This place turns people cold, cold and wicked. That fellow Jeth over there speaks unutterable evil, but I can't move away from him. What if Irma comes back and I'm not here? Yes, of course. Here, you should take it with you. When you find her, give her the doll and tell her, Mummy says this is for her little chicken, and it's time to come home. That's what I call her, my little chicken. She soaks up a steady stream of tears with her shirt sleeve. She ought to come with you then. She ought to follow you back to me. You are an angel. Truly you are. A fella can't hear himself think with all this racket. Day and night she hollers after that child. Yeah, that Farah. You gotta cut that out. What's happened to you? I she needs help, but none that I can give. Mad as a cuckoo, that one. And twice as loud. Distraught don't even begin to cover it. She's hollering after that child of hers. Killed by a void woman, she was. Been dead and buried for a month now. Never even stepped foot in Fort Joy. And there ain't no amount of hollering that'll bring her back. Mummy's right here. Hiya. Where are you? Ah, you're back. Please. Did you find Irma? She still hasn't returned. Where could she be, my dear girl? You've been talking to that snake, Jeth, haven't you? I don't know where he gets these obscene lies. It's sick, totally sick, to torture a mother so. You stay away from that man, do you hear me? Irma isn't. What Jeth says is a lie. You hear me? Goblins, the both of you! If you don't like...